Hello, yes, I have returned and I can speak. Hooray! Like Ariel, I defeated the wicked laryngitis witch and got my voice back. With the help of some antibiotics, of course, a modern day potion, so to speak. A week ago, I polled my audience to see if they'd like my husband to do my voiceover until I recovered my voice. And to the surprise of us both, the majority of you said yes. <laughs> While I obviously do have my voice back, we thought it would be fun to kind of stick with the poll and have Justin, my husband, do my voiceover. But since I can speak now as well, that I would pop in every now and then just to give you a little bit more information about what I'm doing, just so this video can be used as a tutorial as well. So without further ado, let's get into it. Pam ordered a number of small glass bottles from online. Here they are, pre-labeled, but we're gonna remove those labels. She's got some goo gone here. That's some pretty handy stuff. So we're gonna spritz, spritz up some onto these bottles. Hopefully we'll scrape the labels right off. Looks like we're struggling a little bit maybe. Oh, get it out the tools. Yeah, scrape them off. Make sure you protect your hands. You don't want to get that stuff on into your skin. Definitely not in your eyes. Protect yourselves. Oh man, they even put labels on the bottom? Wow, rough. I didn't buy them online. I got them at the dollar store. Yeah, Dollar Store is your friend for some pretty neat, cool stuff. So check around Halloween time and you might find something like I used for this project. Otherwise, go in and see what they have from day to day. They might surprise you. Look for these little jars that have shells in them. Similarly, corked top. You could use something like that. You can use swing top bottles. They also sell those. And our dollar store is the Dollarama, and that's where I purchased these. So yeah, great resource. These ones were just from Halloween. Ah, baby oil. We're gonna start off with some baby oil and some water. We're gonna mix these together, I think. That's what it looks, oh, we got glitter. Uh-oh, zero days glitter free. Some neon food coloring. All right, so baby oil, some water, some glitter and some food coloring. Let's see what goes on. Looks like about half a bottle of the baby oil, some of this red food dye. Food coloring, food dye. A few drops, that stuff goes a long way. Just, uh, I guess, continue to add stuff until you're happy. There we go. That looks like it actually had some, uh, some real color to it. Oh, now we get some uh, dark, dark magenta, purple, one of the two. And now we're going to mix up with some water. It looks like we're going to top off the rest of the bottle. Uh, she's got a funnel there to make this a lot easier. Don't just try to dump it into the neck. That's a great way to make a great mess of your workspace. We can see now that the oil is sitting on top of the water. That's kind of neat. Remember to cap it off before you try and shake it. Ooh, look at it sparkle swirly and fancy this first potion was made with water baby oil food coloring just a couple drops and some glitter although i think i had to use a couple more than a couple drops to get the color correct the ratio for this is one to one so fill half of your bottle with baby oil add your food coloring add your glitter put your water on top, shake it all up. Your baby oil and food coloring separate, which is kind of fun. Um, it doesn't give you that lovely mixed look if that's what you're going for, but it's still fun and it's safe for kids. So this is a great project for the little ones. If you got some at home who wanna help with the Halloween decorations or just helping your area have more of that fantasy aesthetic. Pam is never gonna get that glitter out of her workspace. Oh, look at the color of this one with glycerin. So here we have some glycerin. Let's say one cup of glycerin, more water, and some more of that food coloring. Mica powder, that's gonna be really shiny. She's starting with water this time. Looks like about half full. Ooh, blue mica powder. I guess 
blue food dye this time. That looks like it went way further than the red stuff. A couple of uh, scoops of them. Oh yeah, definitely. She's she's gonna be getting this stuff out of the workspace forever. But look at it. Look at the shine on that stuff. That's really cool. Now we're mixing in the glycerin. No funnel this time. Good luck. Flawless. What a pro. Never doubted. Now we're going to put the cap on. Shake it all up. Look at the shine on that. That's some really deep color in that one. Very nice. Very nice. It's swirly. Ooh. Don't drink this. This one sounds fun. Adult potion? Oh, I see. Well, that looks like isopropyl alcohol and some water. Some more food dye. And more mica powder. What color are we doing this time? Start with them, some water. I think she's doing a 50-50 mix for all of these. That seems to be sort of par for the course. Oh, we're gonna do Looks like purple food dye this time. And maybe some red mica powder. Yeah, look at that. Maybe it's, maybe it's purple. Maybe the light from the camera makes this difficult to see. Mix it all up. Oh, you can already see the shine. Look at that. And top it up with your isopropyl alcohol. Oh, you, you can see the glitter in the mat. It's never coming out. Ooh, look at that. That's pretty cool. I like the look of that. Very nice, very nice. So, potions number two and three are basically the same. You fill them with a portion of water. You add your food coloring and your mica, and then you top with either glycerin or alcohol, and then you shake them up. If you're using glycerin for these, you're gonna to wanna to fill it with two thirds of water and then a third of the glycerin. If you're using alcohol, like an isopropyl alcohol, I use 70%, not the kind that you drink. You're gonna to wanna to fill it up three quarters of the way with water and a quarter of your ratio will be the alcohol. So the only thing with these potions and these bottles that I'm finding, and this one was just doing it for me because they're cheap dollar store bottles. Um, I might find a way to seal the top of this because it was leaking. The mica powder has a tendency to settle at the bottom as well. So while they do look really pretty, and give you that fun swirling effect that everyone sees online all the time, which was the reason I did this video. Um, the mica settles at the bottom. So if they've just been sitting for a little while and you come back to them, it will be settled. So you do have to kind of give them a little shake to get them going again. Um, and that's where I found that this leaking around the top, you could probably seal it with some hot glue or something if you didn't want to actually reuse this again. But of course, you know, if you're just using it for a brief period of time, dump it out, reuse your bottle. So yeah, you can see it settled there at the bottom, but you get a little, a little shake. I also added probably way too much mica powder on this red one because I was trying to get more of a healing potion look. These ones are my favorite because they had more of that mystical potion vibe that I was going for. Not your mama's health potion. <laughs> I was not prepared for these names. Cotton balls. Lots of cotton balls and water. And more glitter. More food dye. Start off with the water. I guess we gave up on the funnel. She's a pro. Look at her go. Uh, looks like red food dye this time. I don't think she's uh, as shy now that she's done it a couple times. I'm gonna mix that glitter right in there. I'm not sure what these cotton balls are doing. Like, do those go in there? I think they go in there. Oh, okay. Yeah, we're just gonna jam them in there. This is, this is gonna be one thick potion. It's like uh, two, three, four maybe. 
cotton balls, maybe four cotton balls. Some more glitter. Some more food coloring. In they go. Mix it well. And a bunch of water. More cotton balls. Rip them up. Jam them in there. I'm not sure if we're at five or if that's a different cut and when we're now at six. Or is this six? I don't know. I can't tell. We'll never know. We'll never know. Looks like she's just adding them until she's happy. More food coloring. Mix it all up. Work it in there. What is this? Seven? Eight cotton balls now? This potion is looking really thick. Like, you'd have to chew this one to get it down. Not that you'd want to chew on cotton balls, you know. What are you at? Nine? Eight cotton balls now? I can't, I don't even know. Nobody knows. She might have to put some text on the screen here. Ten? Is that ten? Or is that the same one just from two different angles? Movie magic. Get some more glitter in there to brighten it up. Some more food coloring. And then we're gonna top it off with some water. Okay. I would have totally slopped at least one of these pores all over my desktop by now. Another, yet another cotton ball. Oh, we're, we're going for more. What are we at? 11, 12? Were we at 10? 8? I don't know. Now we're going to shake it up. Oh, yeah, that's... Yeah, you might need to chase that one with something to wash it down. This last potion is made with water, food coloring, glitter, and cotton balls. You will need a lot of cotton balls. Way more than the 10 Justin thought I used for this. I didn't count them. There were a lot. Basically, you add in a little bit of water, your food coloring, and your glitter, and you pull apart the cotton balls and stuff them in and let the cotton balls soak up the fluid. When you're happy with that amount, you repeat those steps until your bottle is full and you're happy with the look. This one creeped me out maybe the most when I was making it and I'm not sure why. It just had that look of blood or meat or something, especially when it was just filled up at the bottom a little bit. And I feel like that has a lot to do with the color I chose and maybe that's just me but yeah it still looks pretty cool and also another fun one for the kiddos i may have put too many cotton balls in this i'm not entirely sure but it still looks pretty cool and honestly for one that's going to look the same on your shelf it's probably going to be this one and you know your baby oil water mix as well isn't going to settle as much but it does have that cool wave look. Like this one's really mesmerizing on the ins inside there. You know, the glitter stuck in the top liquid. It will remain separated because oil and water do not mix. So that one's, that one's pretty cool too. Okay, now we're gonna decorate them further. Get some craft paper. Oh. This is a cry cut stencil cutter, I think. I think that's what that is. Yes, cutting stencils. You may not know it, but in her spare time away from her other spare time, she does scrapbooking. Oh, that's cool. All right, yeah, we got some labels cut out. Got some stamps. Gonna get some color on there. Oh, I think she's weathering them. Yeah, we're weathering the stamps. Uh, we're sorry, weathering the labels. We are weathering labels. Oh, that's a corner cutter. Look at that. Sizing everything up. Looks like we're gonna weather up another one. 
Sorry, I don't know the names of, of all of those tools or necessarily the techniques she's using. So the machine I used to cut out the tags or some of the tags is called a Cricut. There's different brands of this. It's a die cutting machine. This just happens to be a manual one. So like the Cricut Maker or something, it's just a manual crank one. It will open up and suction to your table. And then you buy these metal dies separately and then you sandwich them with between plates and then they go through, you run them through the press, it's basically a press, and then the dies cut out the paper. It's fun. But you can buy pre-cut tags at the dollar store, so don't feel like you need to buy any special tools for this at all. Some of the tags I used actually are just pre-cut tags. They come in a little baggie with some twine, so you can use the twine as well for around the top of the bottle. So you don't even need to buy twine separately. You could just get a bag of those tags and use the supplies inside of it. Also for the weathering, don't feel like you need to use any kind of special ink like I did. Use some Tim Holtz Distressed Ink for this. Paint would work just fine. Oh, now we're painting corks. We're gonna paint up some corks. So I think they were just like plain black corks. And, uh, I think we're gonna make them look more like natural corks with some color. That's a little better. Looks less synthetic. Now we're gonna hand write labels. I think that's glue, some kind of glue. I think we're gluing. Gonna do a glue up. Yeah, yeah, definitely glue. Oh, thumbprint. Just some, a little bit of extra weathering, I think. Make it look a little bit worn. We got some uh, twine rope thick twine. I don't know what the proper term is. Hot glue. We're gonna hot glue the twine to the bottle. Just to add some more decoration around the neck. Looks like she's got it wrapped around there a few times until she's happy, then snip off the rest. I'm probably gonna glue that piece down too. Yeah, there we go. Don't, uh, don't burn yourselves. She's got that nice silicone pad that the glue gun goes on so that it doesn't damage her craft mat. I should have thought of that ages ago, because, wow, mine's a mess. Uh, looks like we got some thinner twine here for this blue potion. Wrap it around a whole bunch of times until you're happy. Then, uh, I don't know, yeah, more glue. More glue to tie it all down. Well, looks like we're going to tie on some labels now. Got a little hole punch so we can get the twine through. Oh, double wrap. So it doesn't slip around. And then it looks like we're tying a knot to secure the tag. And we're gonna trim off the excess. Leave a leave a tasteful amount. Oh, we're going to weather it, spray it a little bit, tastefully. Yeah, weather it up. All right, here's our potions. I think one says potion of life. Mana. And it, yeah. And that's all, folks. I hope you enjoyed this foray into potion making and that you try some of these for yourself. I'm happy to be back. Honestly and truthfully, I really wasn't sure if I was going to be back because I've had a change in job status and I would be working a lot more. But I can't quit you, so here I am. As far as channel direction goes, as some of you may know, my husband and I have started another channel called Monster Lore where we talk about monsters from mythology and movies and it's been a lot of fun. We really want to dress up our set, so this whole area, to look sort of like a monster hunter study. Originally, we wanted to go with something a little bit more like what we do in the shadows, like that kind of Victorian era vampire look. Uh, but I think it would be really fun to transform this area into some sort of mystical monster hunter study filled with old tomes and oddities and trinkets and scrolls and potions. And I thought I would share that journey here on Total Pamarchy. 
I have a whole bunch of ideas for spooky fantasy study set pieces, and I can't wait to share them with you. If that's something you're interested in, don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss what I'm going to make next. As always, thank you so much for watching. My name is Pam, and this has been Total Pamarchy, the craft channel with a little anarchy. Man, it's been a while since I said that. Until next time, bye!